Hello folks and welcome back to Medieval Total War. I am Step, and this is going to be part 42 of my early campaign where I am playing as Aragon. And I've just about completed uh, reconquering all of the territories that I did lose during the Civil War, mostly island provinces. I have, I think, two more provinces left to conquer. Corsica, which is being held by just a mountain of peasants and a mountain of urban militia as well. So very weak troops and I should be able to take that hopefully with... I don't know if two chivalric knights will be enough, um, but maybe I can gather some more troops to help out with that. And then there is a Cyprus, no, no Rhodes, Rhodes as well, and Rhodes is just being held by two peasants, so I should be able to grab that. And yeah, I think, um, but the issue is, do I have anyone available? The thing is, is that my mercenary armies that I have here in uh, Malta and then Sicily, these guys are just waiting for their ports to be built, so they're kind of stuck here. Same with Naples, I kind of forgot to build a port here. So I'm not making, like, all of that money that I could be making off of trade from Naples, which is really bad. And then I, then I am rebuilding this port here in Portugal as well, so that I can make money off of this trade as well. I can't bump up taxes a little bit here. Actually, a lot of it, yeah. Having the peasants helps. Ooh, actually, you know what, these are... <laughs> These are actually good soldiers, um, yeah, but I am training peasants. I'm just gonna get another mountain of peasants here, uh, to help out with that. And yeah, having the port being finished in two turns will help as well with the income. How am I right now? I'm still, yeah, negative 310, so. But I have a lot in the treasury, you know, I have 231,000 in the treasury, so that's, uh, that feels pretty good. And then I will be making, I'll actually be making money again once Naples and Sicily gets their ports back. It's gonna be four turns for Sicily, yeah, so. These armies are going to be stuck here for now, um, but I think I can still gather enough troops to take back Rhodes and, um, and Sardin or Corsica, yeah. Yeah, let's see if I could find something. So I have, yeah, I have some halberdiers and some chivalric sergeants here in Castile, and two more chivalric knights. Yeah, that's, honestly, that's probably going to do the job right there. I could send these guys, perhaps, but I just bumped up the taxes here in Portugal, and I might want to keep it that way, so let's kind of leave it there. Yeah, let's bring just bring these guys over. Let's take Corsica, like right now. Why why wait? Why wait? Let's get a move on. Yeah, we are kind of in a hurry in this campaign, you know? Like, um, I am building up to this big showdown showdown with France at some point, and I still have time. Um, I still have a little bit more than 100 turns left in this campaign. France is somehow hanging on. Like, they have this gigantic empire, but it's like really fragmented and they're at war with four different factions right now and it's kind of crazy you know they have territories up here in Scandinavia and then like out here <laughs> but then like they have they have the Germans and the Italians like inside of them you know they have some rebel provinces here in Genoa and then yeah down here the Almohads took Algeria with a reemergence but then they haven't done anything else so a lot of these French territories are doing not well on population loyalty, you know, like here 99% here in Cyrenasia. However, then again, they have a crusade that's just taken uh, Palestine, so, you know, they're doing well as, as well. They're kind of, they're, they're on both sides of the spectrum here, you know, they're kind of spread out all over the place and somehow they're hanging on, so. I, I have to imagine their economy is, is sucks. I have to imagine. I have to imagine, you know, with the armies that they have, I, I, can't, I, I, I don't know how they could be making enough money because they don't really have trade networks set up. Like, they have some boats up here in these northern sea regions, but then, like, down here, yeah, it's not really, yeah, it's nothing. They have a boat here in the Strait of Gibraltar, and then they have a boat in the Gulf of uh, Gabes. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the French, yeah, the French Empire, they're just somehow hanging on, you know? Loyalty, and let's see, I thought it, yeah, Anjou, 69, that's what she said. That's, uh, loyalty is going to be having some issues right there. And I thought there was more, you know, I've been tirelessly at work here trying to destabilize France for pretty much the entire campaign. Uh, two pretty muted results, I got to say, but I'm going to tell myself that I've been slowing them down <laughs> as I stare at their empire stretching over the entire map. But yeah, I the thing is, is that anytime they have to lower their taxes to try to stabilize their population loyalty, they're making even less money. And any time that they have to send troops to these back territories to help stabilize these regions, instead of having these troops on their borders fighting, that also does, you know, just help to stabilize them. So, you know, I'm doing something. I am doing something here. 
And I, I think I'm, I'm going to claim responsibility for this one as well. I'm going to claim responsibility for that Elma had resurgence. And maybe the, I can't, gosh, I keep getting these uh, these campaigns mixed up. The Italians were a reemergence faction, I believe. Yeah, looking at their units, like they look too perfect for this not to be a reemergence fact faction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. This has to have been a reemergence faction. Um. Yeah, so they're at war. They are at war with the the French. It would be nice, like the French, the Egyptians, the Mongols, the Italians, like in the in the Germans, uh, all going to war with each other. Like that's that's pretty good for me. Currently, I'm at war with just the Papacy and the Byzantines. Although I'd only want to be at war really with the Byzantines until I take Cyprus, and that's it. I'll 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 be happy to peace out with them. But the the papacy doesn't seem too keen on getting that ceasefire with me. I have this this uh, emissary who's just you know over and over again, repeatedly trying to get that ceasefire with the pope, and he's not having any of it so far. But we'll see. I might have to smash his, smash their face in. You know, I might have to take these units from Naples and just be like, hey, give me a piece, and come up here and kind of sack their shit, and you know, get peace that way. So that that might be the play there. Uh, yes, yeah, so I will be taking uh, that and then how can I take Rhodes? What do I have available? Should I bring troops from Antioch? I could probably spare it, but you know what? I'm having so much fun with these mercenaries. I might just want to hire a bunch more. I know it's not great for my economy, but I mean, I, I do have the money and I do plan on making more money once I get those ports, ports open. So that's what I kind of want to do. Then if I like that's a so that's the thing, like I'll have immediate mercenaries then with these ports, when they open up and these armies become available, then I can just send all these mercenary armies over to Cyprus. Like, I, for a while, I've been, like, thinking, man, what do I want to get together to fight this shit, you know? Because it's just a bunch of archers, which, honestly, could be kind of hard to take out because the, um, sure, like, the Pavis Arblusters and the Pavis Crossbows are not I ideal in melee, right? But they have this big-ass shield, and they can be kind of hard to break immediately. They can kind of hold the line a little bit. Well, these other archer units and guns and cannons kind of shoot you to pieces. So armies like this can be deceptive. They really can. So this whole time I've been looking at these armies in Cyprus thinking like, what the fuck am I going to do about this? Like I need to, do I need two sacks of heavy calf to take this shit? And now I'm thinking, you know what? It would be kind of fun is just, let's just buy a bunch of mercs, which I already have quite a few and throw them in waves at, at Cyprus until I take it. And uh, it's not going to be work, like worth anything, honestly. But it just gives me another province to build stuff at. And that's kind of where I'm at, right? I need provinces to uh, where I can, you know, train agents, build boats, uh, build armies, all that good stuff. I, I need more of that so that I can uh, keep up and get up to a point where I feel like I can take on France. Because when it goes off, it's going to go off, right? It's going to go. It's going to be hot and heavy up in here, so... Uh, yeah, that's going to be really important. So, yeah, let's, uh, mercs. Let's look at this. Hire mercenaries, and, yeah, thank God there's enough. Can I get them anywhere else? No, it looks like nowhere else has mercs. Okay. Well, let's just get them all. All that fun stuff, you guys, and then you. That looks good, and then let's take all of them. And take roads. This is obviously going to be overkill, but once we take roads, we'll just um, we'll probably have to rebuild that port. I mean, it seems to be the case often, more often than not. But once we have the ports rebuilt and all these mercenary armies are free and all these island little nations, then I can sweep on over to uh, Cyprus and just do uh, give them the dirty, you know, teach them a lesson. And I, I mean, honestly, that might kind of like help out the Byzantines. You know, in a way, because they're paying upkeep on all these armies that are just stuck here because they don't have. Well, they do have a boat, but they're not using it the right way. <laughs> like they could just put a boat here in the Eastern Mediterranean and then they could bring all of these armies over to Nicaea or, you know, somewhere else, somewhere else, Constantinople to help out in a fight that's important and that matters. But they're not doing that. They're just kind of paying upkeep on these armies that are stuck here doing nothing on a province that is worth nothing. And I get the irony, you know. The fact that I'm gonna like throw all of this money into you know taking uh, this island, but you know what? It's it's about sending the message, right? So I want to take Cyprus. I want to complete my little Mediterranean trade empire here, and yeah, just profit from there. You know, live like a Ferengi and just kind of a uh, cackle and make a bunch of money. 
and eventually have some bomb ass armies and so we can get a little apocalyptic uh clash with the French in the future because the agents you know I, I'm I'm doing my best using my agents to try to win here but this king is a freaking like a plus six <laughs> valor versus assassins like he's not gonna go down I'm assuming and uh, what we can do, we can like wait for his sons to come up and just keep killing his sons and they'll wait until he dies of old age, which will be a while because he is 25. And then, yeah, then there's like influence. It's not, it's not like amazing, but five is still solid. And that's the nice thing. Like, it'd be nice if I could get these freaking revolutions going, some civil wars. If he lost some territories, I think because I think you lose influence when you lose territories. So it'd be nice if like the Alma heads... Kind of got active, got a little jiggy down here in North Africa and took maybe Tunisia or Morocco. I don't know. These armies are kind of tough, but that's probably not going to happen. But yeah, if they lost some territories up here in the British Isles, that would be cool. Um, up here as well. Yeah, it's not. I guess it's not likely. I think I think they stabilized a little bit. I think before I was looking at them, they were looking a little worse off. But now a lot of their provinces have uh, kind of stabilized here. But I'm going to keep doing my best here, you know. I'm going to keep using my my spies, my assassins, and my um, my uh, 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 inquisitors to try to, you know, continue to st destabilize them. Also, I need to remind myself to keep looking for princesses because I've seen a few of them around. I feel, yeah, finally, there's a French princess, and I feel like it's been a while. Um, I can't remember. Maybe she was here in the last episode, but... Uh, yeah, let's just keep keep talking to these uh, these gals and trying to find wives for my sons because I know that my my eldest is married. Very okay. I need to, need to bring you back. Eldest is married. Yeah, Prince of. Nope, not you, not you. Yeah, Pre Pedro is married, but then a few of them are not. So. So it's about to. I want to keep you know getting getting more wives. And the way that you do that in this game is just keep trying, you know? There's no real social graces here, there's no other strategies. You just keep asking the girl over and over and over again until she says yes, or her, her father says yes, I suppose. So, um, yeah, let's see, I always think of that, like, that scene in Shrek where, um, uh, that Robin Hood character goes like, Oh, merry men! And he, like, calls up his boys, his homies, you know? And I feel like I, I say that in my head every single time. I need to start looking for princesses to marry my sons. I'm like, oh, marry men. Let's go, boys. <laughs> it's just like my homies are coming up like the wingmen, you know? And I think these guys are right now talking to these uh, German, uh, German, yeah, the German gals up here in Lorraine. But then we, we, we got options, right? There's a French one, and then there's another German one down here. There's an Italian one in Burgundy. And I think I want more emissaries, honestly, because... This dude, I want him on Pope duty. This guy just needs to talk to talk to the Pope over and over and over again until that Pope says yes. Um, probably not going to happen, but you know, just, just I, I need you to do that. I need you to take one for the team. Uh, but the rest of them, do I just have the three? I need more. I want more merry men. Yeah. Let's check check this out and see what I have. So one is going to be in Tuscany, and then yeah, that's two. Do we, do we have any more? It's not looking... Yeah, that's just, just the three... Just the three emissaries. Okay, that's not enough. So... Where can I train them? Where where can I dare train them? Sp uh, spies... Do I need spies right now? What have, what have I been using spies for? Um... Yeah, I'm not sh the yeah the islands yeah the islands need spies yeah that's right that's right that's right okay yeah that's that's fair that is fair uh cannons do I need cannons right now <laughs> uh I can train cannons just from Granada and then Valencia can do emissaries after that canist cannon is finished. So after this turn, I'll start training emissaries here. Because we need some more boys on the field, some more merry men, yeah, for sure. That's uh that's how it's gonna be. Because we need to get my sons married. 
just in case, you know, just in case something something bad happens. Like, you know, Pedro's not immune to anything, so I uh, I want to make sure that, uh, yeah, we have enough marriages in place if anything bad happens. Other than that, so I got the two invasions of these islands going down during this end turn. Is there anything else that I need to do? I think this, this assassin's on kill bishop duty. Love it. Love to see it. Is everything else building stuff? I, I do want to keep just building and trading. Even though I am losing money currently, I, 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 I'm not in shutdown mode right now. Because I know that once these ports are open, I will be making money again. So I'm not like... Sometimes when I'm losing money and I'm losing like thousands of money, I'm like, alright, shut it all down. Shut it all down. Don't, don't train more shit. Don't build more stuff. Um, but in this case, I don't think that's where I'm at. I think I'm still in, like, let's go. Let's let's build stuff. Let's make sure that I am getting my troops flow in here. So I've been training mostly chivalric sergeants here in Greece. Maybe our blusters are also a good idea. Even though they don't have the shields of the pavis. I like I do like having a balance of both. I really do. The pavis uh our blusters are also, I mean obviously really good. Um But you know, they slow them down. They do. They slow them down and it can make them harder to use in desert provinces. But do I really, do I, am I going to be using desert provinces or fighting in desert provinces, uh, should I say? I don't really plan on it, but being slow is another thing. Because when you're fighting these, these big battles where you have reinforcements coming on, and then your reinforcements are like guys with these lugging around these sealed shields and huge shields and they need to like, March a goddamn mile to get to your front lines, wherever that is. I feel like that can be really troublesome because they can be tired by the time they get there. And they can, that really has an effect. It really does diminish their fighting ability and their morale. So having someone that's a little bit faster and a little bit lighter, um, I, I think it is worthwhile having this in, in the reserves, the reinforcements, just to kind of to bring them on and they can reach those front lines better. So having that balance is fine. I like it. And is there any other provinces that need build orders put in? Uh, Malta, you have your two peasants. That's good. Do I want to keep training assassins here? I, I don't know. Like I, I don't know if it's really worth it. It's not. They're not. It's just basic zero valor assassins. And I'm already training assassins with plus one valor here, here in Crete. So I don't know how worth it. It is just to get more of those guys. Maybe once I can uh, level up, level this place up a little bit. I don't think I really need. Uh, I can actually get some peasants out. Get some peasants just so I can fill up these castles here in Cordoba and Castile because I, I emptied these castles out for some reason. I think I was um. I don't know, kill, killing peasants or something. I, I can't remember. It was, I just saw red and I killed a lot of stuff. So anyway, yeah, I do want some peasants garrisoning these castles. So that's what that's what I can do. That's that's a useful purpose for uh, Cre or Malta. And yeah, Sicily, you're training peasants. That's good. Swordsmen, that's good. Peasants here, wonderful. Love to see it. And that looks good, yeah. So I think I think we're ready to end the turn. Let me just check my fleets and make sure this is all looking good. Yes, yes, yes. Do I need to get a fighting order in? Yes, yes. That's one thing. That is one thing that I forgot. There is still a Byzantine boat. What do we got here? A Dromon. Uh, zero stars. And we have some ships right here. Just a big old fat ship <laughs> fleet just waiting to take it down. Now, could it flee to the Ionian Sea? Yes, it could, but I have two boats here and a two-star admiral, so yeah, sh hopefully it's not going to flee too far. Hopefully we can get rid of this boat here in the Adriatic. Not that I can trade with any of these provinces right now, but I just want to hurt them. I want to hurt the Byzantines, so anyway, I think that's looking good, so let's just kind of drop this save and end this turn. So they actually want to fight me in the field here in Rhodes. Gosh, it's so tempting to actually fight this one just to try to make sure that I kill them all, but uh, I can't I can't bring myself to do it. Yeah, I lost four four guys, and it looks like I will have to have a little bit of a siege there, which 
Is I could have I could have avoided that, but uh, I just I didn't want to fight that. Uh, yeah, this one I will fight just because there is you know a decent amount of troops here, and I am out outnumbered like three to one. But I think that the quality of my soldiers. Ooh, I forgot to bring the two extra chivalric knights. Ooh. Okay. Well. Bummer. <laughs> that sucks. Well, okay. Well, it's it's still chivalric knights. They should they should do a good job. Zeal star generals on both sides. So let's get it done. Oh man, is that a general all by himself, just hanging out? I mean, it's urban militia, but I think I'm gonna send my knights to go kill him, and then get a morale penalty penalty on the rest of this army, which is already, you know, low morale. These peasants and urban militia are not gonna hold up very well. I'll get my infantry situated on this hill so that I can maybe get a downhill fight against these men. But yeah, if I can just get my knights just to race after... Let's just get that guy. Get him off the field. He might do a little bit of damage because Urban Militia do have a bonus versus armor, so he will do more damage than the, than the peasants, but I still think that two chivalric knights should be more than enough to get the job done here. How about a little urban militia sandwich right here? Let's go, boys. Charging from both sides, and yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be pretty brutal stuff. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's instantly, he was the first person. <laughs> wow, I can't believe they actually killed one chivalric knight. Wow, that's uh, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be it for them, and I should be able to get rid of that entire unit. Now the rest of the army up here is. They're already kind of backing up towards these, like, forests back here, which I'm not a big fan of, because obviously I'd like to use the power of my knights here, but... Yeah, let's just get rid of these last two urban militia. I'll keep bringing my infantry up to try to pressure uh, this main line of peasants, and then we can bring our chivalric knights in for a flank or rear charge in on this side. And you can see the difference that heavy armor does make because these halberdiers, they have they're heavily armored, which is good. But look, they're, they're so much slower than these chivalric sergeants, you know. And that's gonna do a number on them eventually because their uh, their fatigue is measured down here. If you look at their unit cards, it's measured in the amount of bars that are left. I think you start with four, I think. So they are still on the same level as fatigue as the chivalric sergeants, but you know, those lines are a lot you know, further behind than the chivalric, uh, chivalric sergeant, so that does matter. So let's just clean up these peasants, like right here, let's kind of just get a charge in. Why not? We got peasants here and peasants here, so let's go and let's just, let's just send the halberdiers forward. Here and here and then here. And then let's actually just tell these guys to run. I know, I know it's going to be tough for them because uh, they're just big chunguses and they're heavy armor, but Let's just get it done. These peasants are now running away, and what do we have here? Urban militia, urban militia. So yeah, they're gonna have a little bit more bite to them. But we are we did just clean up two units of peasants on this side. And yeah, let's bring down chivalric sergeants. Cleaning up here. Let's go here. And then let's go here. And then yeah, you can fight those urban militia there. I actually am surprised that this peasant army isn't breaking yet. It's, uh, it's actually really impressive. I'm gonna be using, okay, yeah, you guys turn back around. It's ready. It's time to, these two peasants are gonna get away, unfortunately. But, yeah, these guys are still being chased down. And let's get ourselves just a big old fat rear charge into these units here. Wait, are my guys running away? What the hell's going on here? Are we... Oh, no, no, my halberdiers are winning. Okay, I was like, Jesus, that's Kind of crazy. Yeah, it looks like the enemy is fleeing the field now. Now it's just going to be mop-up op operations to try to make sure. I mean, it's it's a tough choice because, like, I would, by, by leaving a lot of men left in the fortification, they would starve out faster because there would be less food to go around. So it's like, it's like fighting my instinct right here, you know? Like, I should just be letting all of these guys go. We'll see. I, I still think a lot of them are going to get away here, and 
we will keep an eye on that and see um, how long it's going to take to siege these guys out and see whether or not I need to bring in some artillery. I can't remember if it's a castle or a fort. I think it might just be a fort. I actually did lose 44 men, but I did kill 322 and I did capture 437. And I will just be sparing their lives. Hopefully this general was able to get a star, so that he is a one star general. And I was able to sink that Dromon, thank goodness. Yeah, let's just kind of release them all. Let's be good. And goddammit, a caravel was sunk in a storm here in the Aegean. Yep, first star. Good job, man. And then same thing here in Rhodes, yeah. Let's see, losing assassins in Flanders. Classic stuff, yep. Master Horse Beat Breeder is completed here in Leon, so just one step closer to getting those Lancers going here eventually. How long is this going to take? So it's going to take three turns to siege out the garrison here in Corsica. Eh, it's not, it's not that, it's not that bad. I think I can wait three years. I don't know. I mean, what is this? It's a keep. It's a basic keep, isn't it? And the port is intact. And I want to keep it intact. And I, I'm trying to remember, like, I don't quite know this yet, but like, I can't remember if assaulting the castle makes it more or less likely to have buildings stay intact. I don't think it matters in this game. I think in Shogun it makes a difference, but then in this game it doesn't. I wish I, I wish I could remember. I'm not, I'm not 100% on that. Do I have, I do have an artillery piece. I could just bring, I could bring in a demi culvert and just smash down. Yeah, I have two demi culverts that I could bring in. That would save me, that would save me a turn. So let's do that. And do I have any other artillery pieces? Or am I just going to be going with those two? I definitely don't want to wait for four years to capture the castle here in Rhodes. So yeah, let's send over. I just have a few more janky pieces of artillery here. One mercenary mortar, two bombards. Let's go boys. Let's get into Rhodes and capture that once and for all. And that way, again, if I would like, again, I would like to keep that port if I can. That would be really nice because I don't want to wait an extra four turns to send all of these mercenary armies over to Cyprus. Alrighty then, so I have just scored 20 points with my uh, next Glorious Achievements points resolution. Alright, that feels pretty good. And I think I got another four for Conquest. Yeah, nice. Nice, nice, nice. So conquering those last two provinces in that last uh, turn did get me another point there, which feels pretty good. I am still quite a ways behind. Wow, wow. I actually kind of not that far behind France. Only 32 points behind Fran- Wow, holy shit. Okay. That feels pretty good. And I am curious to see if this is going to change at all uh, next turn. So for the next resolution phase is going to be in the year 1375, so 25 years from now. So I'm curious to see, you know, how this changes for us. Now France, in that last end turn, had a few issues. So they had this giant ass rebellion happening here in uh, Scotland. Will this win? I don't know. I mean- this is all guns and archers, although the Highland Clansmen are, they're, they're decent, you know, like shock infantry. So yeah, four of these plus two, three star generals along with guns and archers. That, that's kind of not bad. The forces they're going up against. I mean, yeah, there's a chivalric knight. Yeah, that's, that's going to be tough by itself. And then a royal bodyguard and uh, just two units of chivalric knights plus some feudal sergeants as well. Or, I mean, Schwalbach uh, Sergeants and then Feudal Sergeants, yeah. Eh, it's gonna be a close one. It's gonna be a close. It, they might they might win, they might not. And then I did see something else down here in Cyrenasia. Yeah, some more guns and Arbalusters fighting up against... Yeah, I don't think they're gonna win, but... You know what, they are giving the French some issues here. And I like to see that. That's, that's the good stuff right there, so... Yeah, cause some more issues for the French. And maybe that will snowball. We will see. So let's see. Um, yeah, yeah. The points, man. That's that's just that's shocking. That's really, you know, 
See, it all looks like magic if you're bad at math. <laughs> um, so I did have another heir come of age, Prince Sancho. Yeah, good loyalty, good stuff. Two stars, not bad. That's that's totally fine. I will take it. Materialist plus one acumen, lovely. Love to see it. And the fact that he has good loyalty means I don't have to put him in the same province as his king as his father, which always feels nice as well. Let's see. Let's train up or retrain a few more units here, and I think that would be like the the end of all of the units that I have had to retrain since that French Crusade has moved through my lands. Yeah, it's taken a while. They do so much damage. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Um, all right, so let's get these sieges underway here in Corsica. Yeah, just just a couple of units, but this will save me one turn if I go in here and take this. So let's do it. Let's just get it over with. Yep, assault it, finish it off, and then down here as well. It's just killing this one unit of peasants, but I don't want to wait. Three more turns. I do not want to wait. So, yeah, let's send you in and then you in and do that and do that. I still haven't tested that out yet to see if that's actually how reinforcements work in sieges. So I guess I should find out in uh, during this little battle hill here. And yeah, let's see. Let's uh, make sure we kill... Um, oh, I don't have an assassin here. Ooh, well, now I have a reason to bring one of these guys up here. Yeah, let's kill this Byzantine emissary to make sure that no one can spy on my Greek forces here because, yeah, no funny business, okay? I don't have... It's it's a decent army here in Greece, but, like, it's not, you know, super-duper top tier. And now that my ports are finished here in Naples and Portugal, yeah, I'm back up to making 2,761 florins per year, which feels nice. Yeah, that's... That's how it should be, and then I will be uh, rebuilding that master merchant for an extra bonus to my trading in income in Portugal. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Wait, how's your taxes? Yeah, very high. That's what I like to see. And uh, Naples. Yeah, making 2,000. Yeah, 2,200. Really good. So let's get a master merchant here as well. Although, um, hmm. Fort of Fort and then a master merchant. Yeah, that's probably prudent. And two more turns before the port is finished here in Naples. One more turn before the port is finished here in Malta. And then hopefully we get to keep these ports here in Rhodes and Corsica once we finish these sieges. That would be really nice because then we could just bring over all of these mercenary armies over to Cyprus right away and take that nice and clean. I'm a little bit confused about this because I'm pretty sure that I did have artillery unless that was in the other stack and then I dragged both stacks onto the castle thinking that would just go through like that but I, I guess that's not the answer either so how do reinforcements work in the sieges I don't understand I'm just gonna auto resolve this because I don't really uh. <laughs> so I did lose 66 men yeah so I did have the two stacks there but I'm pretty sure I dragged them both onto the castle so I don't I don't know how reinforcements work and sieges. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. Um. Yeah, so made some money there. Awesome. That's all mine. And then I do have artillery for this one. So, uh, yes. I'm going to go in there and make sure that I get this done the right way. I will be keeping one of my chivalric knights mounted. Just to make sure that if I need to run anything down, I can get the job done with them. The other unit is going to be dismounted over here. And then I have my three artillery pieces. My two cannons are in range of the inner gate. My trebuchet is not. So they're just going to be... They're just going to be battering down this. And then let's get my cannons working on the stockade. Luckily, it is just a basic uh, keep. You can hang out there. So yeah, just a wooden outer stockade with the inner, inner wall is going to be a uh, stone. So... There's going to be no towers either. I mean, there's going to be the air towers, obviously, but no artillery towers to worry about either. So that's nice as well. So it looks like there's going to be troops on the inside. So I will have to go uh, inside, which is unfortunate. But you know what? That's just going to be part of the job here. I have now breached the outer gate, two sections of the outer wall, and then the inner gate. And then my artillery did run out of ammunition. So I wasn't able to get anything done against the towers or anything like that. 
But I got some shots in on these units. This is going to be a unit of urban militia outside, 26 of them. And then what is this going to be? I can't see quite see. Yeah, 48 urban militia on that side. And it looks like the peasants are going to be hanging out in the rear. So yeah, saving, saving the best for last, for sure. We're making our breach now, so let's go in with my halberdiers and fight these peasants. Let's bring in these halberdiers through this wall here. And then let's try to cut off these urban militia with these units on this side. Let's go on in with my chivalric sergeants. They can try to block there as well. Then I can save my knights for later. It looks like the enemy general's been killed. And what unit was the general in? I thought... Yeah, I'm not quite sure about that, but let's go in here. Let's finish off these urban militia on this side. Nice and easy. And luckily we got that inner gate open as well, so we don't have to just get a bunch of uh, oil dows on us. <laughs> it's just awful. I hate seeing that. I hate watching that. So luckily we won't, we won't have to do anything barbaric like that. We can just kind of march in and butcher these peasants like gentlemen. Let's try to get in before they can close the... Uh, the gap on us and make us fight in this little choke point. Yeah, let's try to rush in as quick as possible. Maybe we can get rid of these peasants. Obviously, they're not going to run away, so let's try to go back here. We can get rid of these peasants with our chivalric knights. Our halberdiers are chopping down those peasants, and we just have to get our... Don't stop in the middle, please. Go up here and block. Block for these guys. Got 10 more peasants to get rid of, and yeah, this should get wrapped up nice and easy-like. Man, it's so nice to fight an easy siege for once. I mean, I guess this is the key, right? Just bring a bunch of really uh, late tier units up against peasants and then you'll just have this awesome easy siege. Although this uh, this one peasant's just going beast mode against our chivalric sergeants. There we go. So we did lose 65 men, but you know what? Now I have taken that province. And yeah, it's it's curious. I'm really, I'm really confused by why the artillery did not... Unless I just completely forgot to drag drag that stack over. You know, that could be a thing. I guess I can uh, go back and watch the replay when I'm editing this. So yeah, we did uh, pillage some money here in Corsica, and I do intend on releasing... Where Where is this happening? Rebels captured. I'm not sure. Ooh, wow, the French have been ex excommunicated. Huh. I wonder what for. War with the Italians or the or the Germans, I suppose. It's the only the only answer. Well, that's neat. Or, or or the papacy, yeah. Are they fighting the papacy? Oh, I hope they are. If they're fighting the papacy, then maybe that I can get my uh, ceasefire with them. That'd be that'd be really really nice. All right, first rank here in Rhodes. That looks good. And yes, yeah, so getting my spy caught near Equitain. Fortress completed in Valencia. All right, good news. Now I can get those upgraded uh, agent buildings for my spies and my assassins. Port of Fort completed in Naples. Port completed here in Malta. Nice, nice, nice. And yeah, the papacy is still rejecting my ceasefire proposals. That's unfortunate. King Ferdinand. Uh, yep, plus ton happiness and plus one loyalty for being a great builder. Good stuff. All right, and that's that. Awesome. So now we have all of these provinces. Yeah, that looks good. Now we just have to get, uh, and we did keep the port here. So we could move these forces over from Rhodes right away. And what about uh, Corsica as well? Yes, yes, we could invade Cyprus uh, this very turn. That'd be, that'd be awesome. Yeah, just bring all of my mercenary armies over from all of my island provinces here in, uh, where are they? Rhodes is one of them. And then Sicily has the other, Malta has some, and then Corsica has uh, some as well. So yeah, that'd be really nice. How is the Glorious Achievements points going to be looking now? Uh, the same. So it's all going to stay the same. I'm going to make another 24 points, I think. 16, 20, 23, 23 points. Huh. Why, why that? I thought I had 24. Well, whatever. It's... That's fine. Uh, anything change for France? Mm, they're still going to be making a, a bunch. So, uh, 15, 17, 19, uh, 21 points. Okay. So, yeah, I'd be catching up, like, slowly, but not, not fast enough, I'd, I'd assume. But 
they have been excommunicated. So let's see, how's the, what the hell? <laughs> I keep on like looking at this. So he's gained a, a shit ton of influence since last I checked. So he's up to eight now. So I, I being excommunicated didn't do a goddamn thing. Um, I thought it did. I thought that that lowered influence, but I guess it's just like losing, what is it? Losing provinces, betraying allies and losing um, crusades, I suppose. Those are the, those are the, just the three things. That you can do to lose lose influence. Hmm. Not sure about that. Yeah, it's a little suspicious, but overall, though, I feel pretty good that I got my islands back and then I can be invading Cyprus in this very turn. That's gonna feel very good. And I am working on getting my chivalric knights. Eventually I will be able to train them here in Aragon so that I can fill out my armies. I want to get like a bunch of chivalric knights so that I don't just have them for cavalry, but also for my dismounted chivalric knights. For pole arm units, that's going to be like really, really good armies. Like chivalric, uh, dismounted chivalric knights with lancers as my cavalry. Oh my god, that's just going to be crazy. It's going to be so much fun. And I want to get pikes and guns too, and do do like a late era medieval type warfare with with a pike and shot with some really decent heavy cav. So that's going to be something that I want to look forward to later on in this campaign. But that is going to be it for this episode. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this one, and thank you very much for watching. This has been Conestep playing Medieval Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye.